Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده واشهد ان محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد فيا اخوه الايمان my beloved brothers and sisters we begin as we always do by expressing words of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of us and protect our families and allow us to live lives that are pleasing to Him. I want to begin by apologizing. I got caught in a traffic accident that took me a little while to get out of. Um, I was also told that uh, the khutbah finishes at 2.10. So inshallah, I'll make sure that we are finished at 2.10. Today I want to talk about something very important, especially for those who are parents, having children, for those young maulanas and sheikhs and muftis that are returning to our community, to those young people who are memorizing the Quran and are trying to do and to preach Islam and try to bring Islam to people. All of, all of us who are involved in that, the imams, the scholars and so on, who have the desire to share the message of Islam to others, there is something very important that we need to know and to learn about and that is it is incredibly important to know the audience in who you are addressing to understand the psychology the culture the environment of the people who you are giving your message to for if you fail to do so then your message will not resonate it will not have impact it will make no difference to the people who you're trying to reach and all of us living in America, the culture of America changed each of every one of us. And some of the changes that America have had on us are not necessarily conducent, is not necessarily good in terms of trying to be a good Muslim. A lot of sometimes the values we inherit and adopt and live are kind of the opposite to what Islam is asking. And today I want to mention a few of those, and all of us are influenced by it. The first one is that this society is based on the idea that you must be inherently, consistently be discontented with everything that you have. It is a society in which it teaches you to focus on the challenges coming, all the problems that are before you. And so every day people wake up in this country and the first thing they are focused on, the things which are bothering them, which they have challenges with. And when you turn on the TV, all the advertisements that come at you is designed to do one thing, to move you from where you're at to a new place. In other words, they may, an ad may say, for example, your home is not safe anymore. You're living in your home for 20 years. No problem. But then suddenly so you see this new burglar alarm system that is being advertised to you and telling you, you are no longer safe. You need to get this or else you will be in danger. So a lot of the ads project us to be fearful of where we are at so that we will change and buy that new item. Or sometimes it tells you, you are not living your best life. You need to get to a new place. You are just living here. You need to be in a cruise ship. You need to be on a vacation. You need to have this 401k. You need to have this kind of investment to be in a better place. And so the ads try to get us to move from where we're at, being satisfied. And so a lot of people in this country, they don't grow up every day being mindful of the things which they have. It's not an attitude of gratitude. It's an attitude of always worrying, being discontented with what I have. I have a million dollars and I'm not happy. You have billionaires, millionaires, getting up every day with everything that they possibly could have and being unhappy. Whereas in Islam, 
no matter what your circumstances is, it is always with an attitude of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We wake up in the morning, the first thing we are taught to say, Alhamdulillahi alladhi ahyana ba'da ma'amatana. That we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for even getting, giving us life again. And in every phase of the Muslim life, even if you have a penny or you have a million dollar, we're always taught it is from Allah and we are grateful for it. And so the attitude of being always grateful is something which is part of the Muslim dynamic. But if you live in the community and the society, you're always taught to get into this rat race and constantly not satisfied where you are. And when we are calling people to Islam, our young people and whoever, we need to understand this as part of their psychology. The second thing that this society does is teaches us we want everything now, right away. Fast-paced society. We get impatient if things take too long. Very, very upset about things. We used to have in the old days when you go to a toll booth, you have a live person collecting your money. We became upset about that. We wanted to have where we just pass and deposit our money, throw it in the bin. Then we became upset about that. That was too slow. So now we have the system where you just drive through and they just bill you. In every phase of our society, we have moved to a place where everybody gets impatient about everything that takes a little bit of time. On the elevator, they had to create a special button that says closed door. Because when we press and it's not closing, we become agitated. So they said, okay, let's put a special button that says close the door. Now. We have drive through for everything. Even cigarettes. You can drive through and collect your cigarettes. Pharmaceutical drugs, fast food. Everything is based on, you know, Amazon came. They used to mail your stuff. Now we have to get Amazon Prime. We are not satisfied. That's too slow. We need to have a new way. Now Amazon is looking for drones to drop your stuff. Uber and everything. So what has happened is that when you have that, that kind of society and you're trying, if you go one minute over the khutbah, everybody's, oh my gosh, what is wrong with you, Imam? Because, or if you try to stay after Fajr for do a one minute talk, everybody is impatient. If it takes too long, we get upset. Because we, are, we have a society, we cannot be farmers, I'm telling you. This generation, we will never be farmers because a farmer takes a great deal of patience. And nature itself, in order to produce anything, takes time. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to take 10 ayats. Take their time, take their time. Will you slow down? You're not agitated always, have to be on the go all the time. We got something called restless leg syndrome now. Where your legs is not, you know, all kinds of strange things. And so, when you are teaching people about Islam, you have to recognize this, this about them. The third is that we have a society that places stuff before people. We're in a materialistic society. In which stuff takes more priority than people. Where it's more important to have a lot of stuff. Many of us have storage problems. And we value people less. People will abuse other people. When it comes to stuff. When it comes to getting their stuff. And we are in a constant state of renewing our stuff. Expanding our stuff. And in fact the value system of the society. Is such that we look up to the people who have more stuff. The rich, the wealthy, we consider them to be of higher status because they got more stuff than us. And we elevate them, not because of their piety, not because of necessarily their intelligence, they just have more stuff. And so we base our society like that. And what, that hap what happens there is we begin to devaluate the value of human life. And it becomes easy to harm a next one, to bully a next one, to practice racism, to practice asabiyah, to look down at others. This is what shaitan got into trouble for. When you begin to look at people as lesser than, this is what creates wars. I need to have those stuff over there, but those people are blocking me. So I got to get rid of them. I'll call it collateral damage. Friendly fire. I don't care who dies in the path. 
for me getting my stuff. And so this abuse of each other is, is, is inherent in the psyche of the society in which stuff becomes so important for people. They spend all their lives accumulating that. Whereas in Islam, people are more important. Sharing your stuff is important. Not being so obsessed with having a lot, but actually being a person who values truth, who learn how to keep their promise, who learn how to be generous and be kind to people. And we must behave to people in the best possible way according to the Islamic standards of good character. We are told in our faith, if you kill one person, it's as if you have murdered the whole of humanity. That value has lost. And so you see the kids, sometimes when you're raising them, they are rude. They don't have a value for being respectful to others. Because it's not a society based on that. And we are moving in that direction every single day. And there's a further dimension to that. When it comes to people, we see ourselves as better than others. It's about me, my family, my race, my religion, my culture. That's what is important to me. All the others I don't care about. And we develop these barriers between people. Now we think we are better than others. And all of these are against the Islamic concept and precept that we are asked to love our enemy's child. That we are asked to treat humanity with kindness and goodness and love. That you cannot be a good Muslim unless you love for your brother. You will never have the faith that is required. Unless you love for your brother what you love for yourself and your sister. And so it is a completely different paradigm that Muslims have. That the stuff will come and go. It's not important. You will leave it when you die for your children to fight over it. But it's critical and precious in this society. And the fourth paradigm that this society works with is that it worships fun everything about the society is designed to produce fun entertainment even the meals are called happy meals merry christmas everything is designed keep you involved in sports in movies in concerts in vacations in cruises everything when you leave for the weekend your co-worker says have fun enjoy yourself now nothing is wrong with fun but when it comes at the expense of being good the Islamic paradigm is to be good it is more important to be good than to have fun it's a hard thing to say people say what yes when it comes to the Muslim we value being good even at the expense of not necessarily having fun and so when we go to the young people and we are trying to bring Islam to them, if it is not fun, if it is not presented as being cool and, and joyful and happy, they will not show up. That's why the bazaars and the picnics get more turnout than the Islamic lectures. Because this is not fun. This is boring stuff. And so part of the challenge of the, the people who present Islam, how do I take my goodness and package it in a way that it appears as fun to you? So you will relate with it. Edutainment, we call it. How do I educate you while I entertain you at the same time? Because that's in the psyche of this society. Sports is a way of life. You will not take that out of people. And so we who are trying to bring Islam to the people in this country must begin to understand these dynamics, these things which are really critical to be able to reach those who we are trying to reach. And to understand that we too are like that. We have changed in ways that we don't know. We too are people who want fast. We too are people who don't take time enough to focus on what we have and being grateful. We are constantly trying to get. We're all victims of this society's dynamics and how it has molded us. 
And a lot of these are not what Islam desires. That is why it's so hard for us sometimes to become this good conscious Muslim because we are fighting against things which are, we have been practicing for a long time. And so we have lost some of that dynamic. عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرُهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٍ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّا شَكْرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ دَرَّا صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهِ How beautiful is this? The Prophet ﷺ said, We are a unique people. Strange is the case of the believer in that no matter what happens to them, it is always good for them. And it doesn't happen with any other people. For when goodness reaches them, they say, Alhamdulillah, and that is good for them. And when difficulties and hardship reaches them, they experience and they exhibit and they practice sabr. And that is good for them. They don't get flustered. They don't get frustrated. They understand that whatever is happening to me, good or bad or ugly, is from Allah. It's from Allah's wisdom. And I'm going to trust that even though Allah has caused me to lose my job right now, it is because this is best for me. Because I trust that Allah is looking out for me and directing my path to a new job that will be better for me in the long run. So the believer, no matter what happens to them, never ever questions the wisdom of Allah and never gets frustrated with their circumstances. Because they see this as part of Allah's plan for them. And so, we as brothers and sisters in our religion need to first make sure that we fight against those kind of concepts which are ingrained in our society and is trying to make us become like that and shy away from them, fight against them for this is not our paradigm. As to what is happening around us in the society today, I gotta say something about it briefly. And I just wanna say it in a very simple way. That throughout the ages of history, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have always come to the aid of people who are suffering at the hands of tyrants and dictators and oppressors. Allah has always ensured that those people will come out okay and he always sometimes make a miracle happen to remove those tyrants and those dictators and those oppressors in the case of Musa salam, which was so tough with Fir'aun Allah caused a miracle to happen that was so extraordinary and so difficult to fathom that a sea will part to save the believers and engulf the tyrant. Allah caused a miracle for, them, for him to disappear. When it came to Abraha coming to destroy the Kaaba, Abdul Muttalib says, I'll take care of my camels. You see that house? It has a Lord who will protect it. And Allah caused a miracle to happen to take care of Abraha. Birds dropping. Where do you escape from birds? You can't go anywhere. Dropping stones as weapons and destroying. Allah causes a miracle to happen. Even when those who tried to oppose like Abu Lahab came and tried to shout down the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to the aid of the Prophet and said that Abu Lahab will end up in the hellfire with his wife. Abu, li Abu Lahab lived long after that. And he could have easily said I become Muslim even pretend say I become Muslim how can Allah says in the Quran I will go to hellfire and disprove the message of the Prophet Sallallahu said this is crazy you Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying I'm going to hell the, and I said I'm Muslim how can I be treated like this by Allah it shows that your book is not true it never occurred to Abu Lahab for the rest of his life to even do that Allah will always come to the aid of the people who are oppressed. Keep making dua, but keep striving to establish your faith in our lives. You cannot complain about what is happening out there if you are neglectful of your own practice. 
If you are not praying your salah, why are you complaining? Until you get your act together, my act together, me, unless we get ourselves together and come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with obedience and worship properly to Him, we have no right to complain. We've got to fix our affairs. You're sitting there and complaining about racism, complaining about it, and you are being unjust to your own self by our disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have no right to complain. Rather, make a decision that me and my family from today on are going to try to practice our faith and be better Muslims. And that is the response that will trigger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to our aid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand this and protect us. Alhamdulillah bil alamin hamdan kaseeran tayyiban mubarakan fi wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam wa ba'd rabbana atina fid dunya hasanah wa fil akhirati hasanah wa qina adhaban nar inna Allah ya'muru bil 'adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha 'anil fahsha'i wal munkari wa baghi ya'izukum la'allakum tadhakkurun ushkuru Allah yashkurukum wa aqimus salah Allahu akbar Allahu akbar ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله